Okay, try this one last time, and if this doesn't work, we're going to have to add some more tin foil to the receivers, and we'll also do our best to probably do two tin cans on a long string to see if this is going to be the case. So if you are going to be joining us, stick around. This may work, this may not work. We're not really too sure at this point in time, so have to see exactly how things go on and give it another try here in a little bit. Three, two, one, and see if that shows up uh, on Periscope here in just a little bit. Hey, cool. Looks like we even got some people actually watching. Thanks for uh, sticking around for the uh, latest attempt for right now. Uh, we'll give it another try and see if it goes on. And if this doesn't work, again, it's back to two tin cans and a long string. So we'll see how well this continues uh, to work for the evening or not, possibly. We'll find out. I wonder if David Letterman had it this hard back in Indiana. Looking again at some quiet conditions in the Mid-South area for right now, we again see some possible problems into around Friday. We'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit, so more on that in just a little while. We'll take a look at earthquakes in the Mid-South, and we'll also take a look and see a little bit more about what's going on uh, in and around the area with the possibility of some very cool weather heading our directions. Uh, welcome to Pike Park. Hope I'm saying that correctly on Instagram and or Twitter. Thanks for dropping on by for more information on Periscope and Twitter. And thanks to everybody else uh, for joining us on Facebook for this evening. And we'll keep you updated on what's going on throughout the Mid-South throughout the rest of the evening for right now. Currently, let's take a look at radar and see what's going on, which does not amount to a lot of anything in the Mid-South area. It's exceptionally dry. It's relatively clear. Things are pretty quiet, again, for the time being for tonight across much of the Mid-South and not a expecting too much in the way of rain at least until we get into around Friday and if you have any outdoor plans there that's where we could be seeing some problems out across the Mid-South for outdoor activities but we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on into the Mid-South area tonight where it comes to anything involving uh, rainfall and or that in just a minute. Let's take a look right now and see about what's going on uh, with the let's see there was something I was going to show you here for just a little bit. This is, I promise, a professional show, more or less. It gets there eventually, so kind of like the slow train. We're seeing, again, the few lurchings around going across the area tonight. Uh, welcome to Vanessa Vivi Miller from Cordova. Thanks for joining us tonight. Kevin Dunn, uh, yeah, audio is coming through. Last I checked, I could probably shake the uh, control system around to see if that's working, but as of right now, last I checked, it is working at top volume, but I can shout louder if at all possible. Right now, again, for the Mid-South, we don't have much in the way of earthquakes to talk about. We did have one earthquake uh, late last night, just about before midnight into around early Wednesday morning universal time, uh, just before midnight at 1.9, well to the north and west of Dyersburg, right around the Tiptonville area. Wasn't much of anything to look about. Again, a 1.9, barely even detectable. But if you did feel it, please let the National uh, Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis know and the United States Geological Survey. They'd love to know more about that. Fires in the Mid-South, the red dots that you see on screen are fires that were reported in the last 24 hours. Uh, also, again, having to do with either uh, wildfires or, again, fallow fields being burned out there from time to time. So we did have some fires taking place, uh, even in northern Mississippi, back around Oxford between there and Holly Springs between there and I-55. So we did manage to pick up at least a little bit of some activity in the way of fires. The yellow dots on screen are the ones that have been reported since January the 1st. So we have had a decent amount of fires around parts of northeastern Arkansas within the course of the last uh, few weeks and months out there. And we'll continue to see more of those throughout the rest of the next several days and weeks as the dry weather continues. Burn bans in effect. Again, we continue to see uh, no burn bans in effect for Mississippi. Uh, nothing issued there. There are plenty of them in Arkansas for the central part of the state mainly and also down into around the Washtaws, we do have some <clears throat> areas of fire concern out there. Uh, mainly, again, at this point in time, we're not seeing huge amounts of wildfire danger, but according to the Arkansas Forestry Commission, we do have a higher fire threat in southwestern Arkansas and back into the Arkansas River Valley 
That's going to be the worst of the worst. Rest of the area, again, showing more of a moderate threat, but check with anyone you're going to be going out with uh, for camping and whatnot to make certain that you can use campfires out there just to be on the safe side. Tennessee, again, burn permits are required if you're going to be doing any outdoor burning of debris and only under certain conditions. More information available at burnsafetn.org for more details on that. And also seeing, again, some decent amounts of wildfire danger out there. The National Weather Service in Memphis reminding you that there's an elevated risk of wildfire danger. East Arkansas, Missouri Boot Hill, Southwest Tennessee, and North Mississippi Wednesday. And again on Thursday, we've got very dry humidity and fairly breezy winds out there that's going to do a pretty good job of exacerbating any wildfire danger across much of the area. So please keep that in mind. Temperatures out there just past the 8 o'clock hour, uh, back to around Memphis International Airport. We did have again uh, some pretty cool numbers out there for the early evening hours and as of right now much of what we're seeing for the time being is mainly mid to upper 40s to lower 50s 40s down toward uh, Oxford at the University Airport Batesville and Panola County at 47 degrees 46 in Corinth already and just outside of Jackson at Lexington uh, River Airport we do have again temperature of about 46 degrees out there so far 45 degrees now as that number continues to drop around Savannah in Tennessee so a very chilly evening coming up. Becky Cody Donaldson, welcome from the West Memphis, Arkansas area for tonight. Let's see if anybody's checking in on Periscope for right now and has any questions for anything. Uh, Arrow Dad of Six, welcome to the show uh, on Periscope. Thanks for joining us again for so far this evening. Let's go ahead and see what else is going on out there. Yes, we still have a disturbance in the Caribbean. It is down to a 40% chance of anything developing, so that's good news for the time being. So we'll be watching again this with a lot of interest is just off the coast of Nicaragua and expected to kind of wander its way back toward Cuba into the next couple of days. So, so far it doesn't appear to be a threat, but definitely if you're heading to the Gulf of Mexico, want to keep an eye on this system again for travelers' sake. Don't want to go heading into a situation that you're just going to have to turn back around again and head back out of to be on the safe side. Very cool conditions out there for the next couple of days expected. We will see again the possibility of getting into to some fairly dry conditions out there for uh, the next couple of days. Very much on the cool side as we head into the next uh, couple of days as we see again some fairly cool conditions out there uh, into around Friday and afterwards into the weekend. We don't see a lot in the way of uh, very cool conditions for again the next day or so but getting into around the weekend large swath of colder air really starts to kind of plow its way through the area and that gives us again some pretty cold conditions in to around the area of the freezing line right north of the Mid-South, so that could be a bit on the chilly side out there. Paulette Anders, welcome from uh, Bartlett this evening. Glad to have you along for the ride. Currently, again, on radar, not much. A few light sprinkles up around the Ohio River Valley, but beyond that, we just don't really have too much going on for the time being. Next cold front is going to be on the way into the next couple of days. We see, again, this next storm system uh, dropping on through. Moisture is going to be fairly limited, but as we get into Friday afternoon, especially Friday afternoon and evening, that's where we see the possibility of more chances of showers and thunderstorms making their way into the area, and that could make some situations interesting for Friday night football into the area between now and then. Things get a little bit on the cool side again at nighttime, but we are going to be warming back up again relatively soon uh, right after that. Not heat waves or anything else like that. We will see again the possibility of uh, even more problems out there. A little bit on the warmer side for the next few days after the weekend. Tonight back into around the mid 40s or so for much of the Mid-South area. And then as we head into tomorrow, temperatures for Thursday will be a little warmer back in the mid to upper 70s to around about the lower 80s. Remaining dry into Thursday night. Temperatures back into the lower 50s, mid 50s for the metro area. As we go into Friday, high temperatures are going to be a little bit different. They'll be in the 70s back to the southeast and a little bit cooler back to the northwest. That's our cold front coming on through. And as it does, you can see before that front gets here, winds are out of the south and west. Behind that front, winds will be coming in from out of the north and west. 
and that'll be our front making its way through the area and could be pretty breezy. Winds of about 15 miles per hour across uh, portions of the Mid-South area, so we could be looking again at some fairly chilly conditions as we get into Friday night football. Speaking of which, let's take a look at that. Weather for around 7 o'clock. Green indicates, again, the possibility of rainfall. Darker green, the higher possibility of rain. Looks like rain even possibly with a few thunderstorms down around Tupelo. Lighter rain chances around northeast Arkansas. Not looking at a a lot of rainfall, maybe about two-tenths to a half an inch of rain, but that's enough to cause some pretty sloppy conditions for uh, Friday night football out there. Not to mention the fact by the time the game kicks off, winds will be turning out of the north and west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and the passing game could be interesting, 10 to 15 miles per hour on wind gusts. So we could be looking at a pretty chilly end to the week. How does the weekend look? Saturday, temperatures for highs. These are high temperatures, only back into around the lower 50s for much of the Mid-South. So we're looking at some lower 50s for highs on Saturday, which means as we clear out going into around Saturday night, low temperatures will be correspondingly very chilly across the area, including some patchy, possibly widespread frost. This could be a fairly good killing frost out there. So if you have any plants you want to protect, uh, this weekend is definitely going to be the time for that. So please keep that in mind. If you have any outdoor growies out there, more tomatoes or anything else that you want to keep uh, taken care of as well. High temperatures on Sunday may be a bit cooler back in the lower to mid-50s, and winds will continue out of the northwest at about 10 miles per hour, but the rainfall chances will be gone from the entire area, so very quiet there. And low temperatures on Sunday night, again, back in the lower 30s. Hopefully this will take care of anything involving uh, the pollen out there because those of us who are suffering from ragweed and have for a very long time, uh, this is something that we want to make certain that that gets killed off as soon as possible. But that's just my regular state of affairs because the nose knows very easily that a lot of problems can be had uh, because of that. Not much going on in space at this time. A uh, polar storm out there happening uh, with the sun buffeting us with a solar wind. A lot of aurora as well back to our north, but not much of anything else going on and little if anything to talk about in the way of major problems with space weather for right now so not seeing too much of a problem there join me on my facebook page for more information throughout the rest of the night plus we've got some new pictures coming up from the memphis pets alive photographers who go to the wag along tuesday event to be able to help out get pictures taken of all of the pets out there so they can get new owners uh, more information about that also a whole bunch of all kinds of other neat and interesting information uh, available out there, videos and pictures that people have submitted. And thanks to everybody for some very cool pictures out that direction. Here's one from the House Onic backyard of a lone jet con trail showing up at sunset at the right altitude. Also, be sure to join me on my Twitter page. More information at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. You can also watch on Periscope as that is continuing uh, at this time. And there it is relatively live, but unfortunately it looks like we're having a bit of a connection problem for right there. And of course, don't forget to join me on Talk Back Live in the mornings with Bob and Josh. That's on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. And if you can't reach them there, you can reach them on the website at talkbacklivenetwork.org. Gloria Davis, weather for Saturday night. Let's back up a little bit and show you a little bit more about what we're seeing there. Low temperatures Saturday night will be back into the lower to mid 30s and decently chilly out there, and that's just the air temperatures for right now. As we head into the evening hours, winds will be dying down a little bit, but we'll still be out of the northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Could see some wind gusts over 10 miles per hour early Saturday night, and then clearing on out for right there, and by Saturday evening, no chance of rainfall going to be expected for Saturday night and following. Let's see if we can go forward a little bit to see what's going on on Tuesday. High temperatures will be back into the mid-60s. Very comfortable and about 10 degrees below normal. So getting things ready for trick-or-treating looks good. And Tuesday night, weather Ah, uh, that doesn't look good. Okay, Th showers, maybe a few thunderstorms possible, and temperatures by the time trick-or-treating kicks off will be in the mid to upper 50s. Now, because this is about a week out, I would say to take this forecast with a very big grain of salt to where we may see, again, the possibility of this changing 
uh, sometime soon. So hopefully this is not going to be a big thing uh, into the next several days, but we could see again the possibility of some cold rainy conditions it looks like for uh, Halloween, but we'll be watching that as we go throughout the next few days, so stay tuned for more on that. Talk Back Live already told you about that, so stay tuned for more on that. We'll have more details coming up a little later. More on our seven-day forecast available again at wreg.com slash weather. If you'd like to see more about the forecast from the Storm Prediction Center and all kinds of other things, we've got tons of that information available at wreg.com slash weather. And of course, don't forget my entire forecast tomorrow morning on Radio Weather with Bob and Josh on Talk Back Live for more details there. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything else you want to see again for tonight, a uh, good opportunity to see more on the website. And if my keypad would behave, it would help by just a little bit. Let me get rid of that right there and then show you that again, if you have any questions or concerns, the big blue bar up there is showing the website, the email address austin.onic at wrag.com Feel free to email me and let me know what you would like to see on here. We'd love to have you along for the ride to keep you updated on what's going on, but if there's something specific that we're missing, let us know and we'll see if we can include it. More details coming up throughout the course of the rest of the week with News Channel 3. Jim Jaggers will be on in just about 90 minutes with News Channel 3 at 10 and I'll have more coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 on our new weather overtime page for the morning hours. Stay tuned for more on your complete forecast with News Channel 3 on air and online. And thanks for joining us for the evening edition of News Channel 3's Weather Overtime.